This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 542 of the Dressage Radio Show, official podcast of the United States Dressage Federation on the Horse Radio Network, brought to you by Kentucky Performance Products, TotalSaddleFit.com, Bates Saddlery, and SureFit Equine Stability Program. For this Thanksgiving episode, our guests are Karen Isberg with her adult amateur segment, then regular Wendy Murdoch talks about methods to develop riding skills, and we have a great trainer tip with Brianna Swilling. This is Reese Koffler Stanfield from Georgetown, Kentucky. And this is Philip Parks from Rockwood, Ontario, and you're listening to the Dressage Radio Show. And we have Glenn on. Hi, Glenn. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving late, Phil. I know. Happy American <laughs> Thanksgiving, yeah, Phil. Yeah, you're a month and a bit. You're a month and yeah, a bit Yeah, <laughs> we missed it like a month. It was a month ago <laughs> yeah, uh, for, yeah. for Canada. <laughs> That's do you, okay. Do it's you now celebrate, like very snowy. Do you celebrate here, the same way? Is it big family thing and dinner and all that? Yeah, you guys do a Thursday thing, which is sort of weird. We we have a we you know we kind of celebrate on the weekend and have the Monday off from work for most people. So that's that's how we do it. And, and it's, it's in October. All the pumpkins are still around, that kind of thing. So I think it's just a seasonal yeah. earliness. Yeah. We oh, do, it sounds. It we sounds do good. it so we can eat from for four <laughs> solid weeks. To yeah, so yeah, yeah. Right, yeah, right. We were talking Thanksgiving. about that. <laughs> all day treats, all the way. We till... we had that discussion today. I was like, nobody's allowed to bring any treats to the barn. <laughs> Literally, I will. You have to leave if you can bring them. It's normally, you know, cookies and cakes, and we're getting ready to go south, and needs to be no cookies and cakes in our barn because <laughs> we'll eat them all. So, but yeah, no, it's great, Glenn. What do you you and Jennifer do for? We go to my brother lives uh, in our same development horsey development down here so we go over there and have a kind of a quiet day and you know spend the day with him it's ironic we live a mile apart and like most families we see him like twice a year so yeah it's, it's, yeah it's true that's so sad <laughs> we you get said it. today well, you name. never talk to your brother and it's like yep i know I, the feeling <laughs> like, i know my brother and his girls are coming he has two girls and so there are four of my little babies are around my nieces and nephews and they're not so young the youngest is six now six and a half so we're we're pretty active now and now it's like that's what the can loud we do? stage and that's the loud stage they are yeah. and they're and mostly girls so we're not allowed to scream at the top of our lungs. Like Aunt Reese can't handle that. So as long as we're not screeching, I'm I'm good. But they're so much fun and, and you can like have a conversation with them and we can, if they don't want to sit at dinner, they get excused and they go play and then we can actually have some like adult oh, time. Is so, there an adult then. table and a kid's table like it used to be for us? I know we don't, I, I know we just kind of all sit. Okay. My parents have a, they can expand their table. So we all kind of sit at the same table but it's not as formal as it used to be we've just kind of at this point in time we just kind of let that the roll fancy china's uh, gone now yeah <laughs> <laughs> it will come back i'm sure my mom likes to have a fancy thanksgiving but right now just with the ages and you know we play football and and play horses and they come to the barn and we ride a little bit we ride my niece's pony and you know we have that kind of fun now so it's a little bit different but we all you know just have a nice big spread and and the guys hang out and watch football and it's a really fun fun week and it's it's my niece's birthday, so we, we're doing a little painting ornaments, you know, things like that. So I really do enjoy that. And and I actually am taking Friday off. I We were talking right before the show. I very rarely will take a day off, but I don't see them very often. So I really want to enjoy spending time with them. But my nieces said they would come help me with uh, barn chores. So I wouldn't want to take say no. <laughs> see, Phil, <laughs> but it'll be fun. that's why we do it on a Thursday, because then we get Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And yeah. Sunday off. No. And <laughs> Sunday off. Yeah, we get the whole weekend. That makes sense. So. Yeah. Totally and of course, it's sense. Black Friday. So, I mean, there's that. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, I'm going to. Well, I, I participate yeah. in that. So, yeah, for sure. Well, there Glenn, we also have something really fun coming right after Thanksgiving. Yeah, a couple what, days what away. What are you working on? Yeah, yeah Radiothon is going. Holiday Radiothon, our fifth year, is going to be on Monday. So, be sure to tune in 12 hours live from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Time. You guys are hosting the 11 a.m. Eastern Hour. And we'll We'll be here with your guest, Pam Stone, comedian Pam Stone, who's also a dressage yep. rider and just hilarious. She's a lot of fun. So yeah. she'll be here. We have guests all day long. We're giving away a ton of prizes, almost $10,000 worth. And t- tell me one other podcast in any 
genre that's giving away ten thousand dollars in prizes in one day. Zero. <laughs> so, I was going to say I don't think that happens. Zero. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So cool. So that's all happening Monday. You can call in to win. So go to holidayradiothon.com. Call in early in the day. That way your name's in the hat all day long. We're giving away prizes. And you can see what all the prizes are. You can see what all the guests are. And we'll have it recorded after as well. So if you miss anything live, every hour is going to be out recorded. So you won't miss anything, but it's a, it's so much fun. And it's a great day. And it just, I can't tell you how many people, I probably counted about 100 people that have said they've taken the day off this year from work so they can listen all day live. And also people say that it just gets them in the mood. It's the thing that turns the corner for them for Christmas. So, awesome. yep. So that's Radiothon, Fantastic. December 2nd, Well, we're Monday. looking forward to it. Yep, well, we're 11 o'clock, so we're looking forward to chatting with everybody. It's going to be a great one. And we have a great Thanksgiving show for you today, and we're going to stop with quick commercial from Kentucky Performance Products and come back with Karen Isberg on her Oreo cookie segment. She swallowed hard as they walked into the start box. She could feel his muscles tense under her leg. Five, four, three, two, one. Have a great ride. She didn't have to ask. He galloped out of the box and across the field toward their first training level course. His ears pricked. Her heart pounded. He attacked each obstacle with confidence, clearing them with room to spare. A huge smile broke out on her face as she crossed through the finish flags. She leaned forward and buried her face in his neck. Their bond of love and trust blocked out all else. This love story is brought to you by Elevate. Research proven to have superior bioavailability, Elevate supplies the essential vitamin E often missing from the equine diet. Its all-natural formula supports healthy muscle and nerve functions. The horse that matters to you matters to Kentucky Performance Products. Call 859-873-2974 or visit kppusa.com to order today. Well, tonight for our Adult Amateur Spotlight, we have Karen Isberg. She stayed on to give us a talk about her horse, Oreo. And she, during the day, is the president and CEO of Kentucky Performance Products. But this is her Adult Amateur Spotlight for the month. So, Karen, welcome back. Hey, thanks for having me. We are excited to have you. And we have had a very, very good month of training, which I can happily report as your trainer. But tell everybody what's been going on this month. We've had a very, very good month. Oh, we've had a lot of fun. I think one of the things that's really helped us out is it's cooled off a little bit. And Oreo, <laughs> Oreo does not like it when it's hot. And Oreo is not, he's not always, he's, he's a little bit lazy anyway. And then when it's hot, he's just kind of like, oh, my God, I can't, oh, I just can't move. He just, he just, he'll walk in the, he'll just stop. And Reese is going, what's going on there? I'm like, I just, he can't move. <laughs> he's <laughs> like too he tired. <laughs> so we have to get him. So now that it's cooled off, I have a lot more, I have more horse, you know, and, it, and so it's been a lot of fun because I don't have to kick as much. So I can get some other things done. I think the biggest thing that um, we've, that has happened this month is that I'm really starting to develop, I mean, what, what, I guess what dressage riders call feel. And I don't know exactly how to describe that, Reese, except that I can, I can tell what my horse is doing underneath me. And I can tell sometimes before he gets to the point where it's so obvious and we, we've gone so wrong that it's hard to fix. Does that, is that a good way to describe that, Phil? And- yeah. Yeah, I mean, feel is is such a hard time. It it it's it's really hard to describe feel, right? So tell us what 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 do you define as feel for me? Yeah. Well, so for me, the feel is the way I the way I can best describe it is that oftentimes now I will start to correct something before you tell me I have to correct it because I've started I've I'm beginning to feel when so. Oreo likes to get long as, as we, mm-hmm. as, as we go. So um, if we're doing a circle or something, he's better. But then when we go down the long side, he tends to get long and on his forehand. And before I didn't really notice that, but now as I come out of the corner, I can start to feel him starting to fall and I can do the half halt or the quick feet or whatever we need to do to correct that before he gets so long. And before you're going, okay, now he's gotten really long. You have to pick him back up again. And it's much harder to correct it once he's stretched himself all out and gotten very long. It's much easier to correct it if I can feel that he's starting to do that and catch it before he does it. 
So in my mind, that's kind of what feel is. It's, it's almost like when you first learn to ride, you can't tell when your horse is going to break into a trot. They just do it. And you're like, oh, no, all of a sudden they're trotting or, you know, or they're walking, they're trotting. And next thing you know, they're walking. But as you ride, the longer you ride, the easier it is for you to tell that moment before they break that they're going to break. And you can you can kick them and get them to, to move forward and not break. So I think that's a real simple description of feel. But then as you get more advanced, the feel becomes how the horse is moving. Is he collected? Is he using his hind end? Or is he stretching out or getting too long? Does that make sense? Yeah, I think that has a lot to do with, you know, the feed, the feedback loop that, that happens when you have someone standing on the ground saying, okay, now, and, you know, and then as you, the longer you ride, you know, the longer you ride and the longer you don't need that feedback from your coach as much because you're starting to, I think it's a, a recognize, a recognizing of the problems that of, of your horse and, you know, before you have to be told, you can start to fix these things, or at least realize that they're, that they're happening. And so, you are um, learning to to ride, you know, better on your own, and and get the horse going in the way that your coach is telling you how the horse should go. You're starting to to pick up on these things and these signals uh, earlier, and 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 starting to put your own corrections on the horse. And and I think you're just you know describing you know, the learning process and, you know, getting some of these things implanted into your brain or, or you start to recognize earlier and earlier and earlier. And, and, and that's a great feeling. And, and obviously your coach is going to be able to just be quieter. You know, I always tell my students that your goal is to get me to shut up because when <laughs> I don't have to say anything anymore, that's you're my finally, goal always. You know, riding well, right? <laughs> That's great. Well, and it's just, just so exciting to have that. Like today, I we were doing some work, and I went around the corner, and I thought to myself, "Quick feet," because that's what I—that's my kind of my cue in my head for my half halt to kind of collect him up and half halt him. And I didn't think it in my mind two seconds later to reset it. So yeah. I was like, "Yes, <laughs> I got it." You know, it was really, and it was just—it's so much fun because I can do so much more. Now that I'm recognizing those things, and it, it just, I don't know, it's just really exciting. Also, I have, I get off every lesson and I go, oh, that was so much fun. That was so much fun. But I think it's also recognizing you're also strong enough, right? So your position is, is actually quite good. We were talking about that today. You know, your position is strong. You've worked really hard in the last six months, nine months on your position. So a lot of times there's not a lot of correction on the position. And then you're able to understand like everything that you've been, We I, I haven't stopped telling you what we've been doing, but you're now able to understand, like you feel it, you understand it, and then you can just ride through it. So it's so much easier for you as you do that. And that's been, that's been quite fun to watch. You're also a very hard worker. So, and you think about your lessons and you die your lessons and you ride your lessons and then you ride your horse. And so all those things fall into place. So you can, not only is it a mental game, but it's also a physical. You feel it, you can make corrections, and it's it's really, really fantastic. And and that's why I think in the last maybe month, we've just made huge, huge leaps because now it's pretty easy for you to do those things versus having to think about it, how to move your leg, how to do, you know, et cetera. There's not as much thinking and more feeling. And I think that's yeah. also what you're talking about with sort of the, the feel factor. And I think something that Phil said is really key is you have to have that person on the ground because you need that feedback. You know, yeah. what do I look like? What am I doing now? You know, the other day, Reese, you said, oh, well, he just really got long on you as we were going, oh, we were we were trying to do a lengthening or something. I don't know. But and, and I was like, oh, is that what that was? Mm -hmm. That's what that was, because I felt that before, but I wasn't exactly sure what was going on underneath me. So to have somebody on the ground to say what's happening right now, that's what this is. It's yeah. just huge. So, I mean, I, I know not everybody can afford to have a trainer there all the time, but if you can have a friend or, you know, get even just a video camera or something, get somebody to video you so you can see these things, it's better in real time. So if somebody can tell you that knows what they're doing, tell you what you're doing, it just makes so much difference because you can equate, then you can, you can equate, this is what it feels like. And that's what's happening when it feels like this. So I just think that's, yeah. That's really important. Yeah. And that's yeah. the key, just is the key to a good trainer. And repetition, right? Like repetition. That's it, why we and, spend and, so much it, time yeah. practicing. 
Yeah. Right. In repetition. Um, and there's sometimes you're like, wow, that's, per-, you know, I get it. And, and that's yeah. been really good. Yeah. Well, it sounds yeah, we've great, had a lot Karen. Of it sounds like where it's like, yeah. that's what you meant. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think it's a little bit like climbing a mountain and you've sort of hit your, you've got a plateau going. I think this is, in, you know, in my own training and in my students, you sort of hit these plateaus and you feel like, okay, I'm finally here, but I got a little preview for you before too long <laughs> and you get too comfortable and feeling like you've got it. <laughs> you're going to have to step your game up again. Yep. Oh, and I, and I, you know, I don't know what that means for you, but you know, for a lot of people, it's you know going to the next level. You know, yep. whether you're riding first level right now and some lengthenings and this and that, or you know, and, and then <laughs> and then challenging yourself to go up to second level with some new movements and stuff like that. But yeah, normally we don't plateau too long. We we try not to get too happy with ourselves. It's so funny, Phil. It's like it's like we're a broken record. I actually we literally just had the same conversation. And today actually we we did some test riding cuz we're getting ready. Actually, we're getting fairly close to the Florida show season. So which is funny because we're Karen trained over the summer and we'd planned on showing in the winter. So we're really training for Florida, which is coming soon. Like the horses will leave and I don't know, 20 days or something. So we're getting ready to show actually. So I said the same thing. So in that sense, I think it's really good when you're show, getting ready to show to be very comfortable at the level that you're competing at, but you need to be moving up and training in the next level. And and that's exactly, Phil, what we've been working on, isn't it, Karen? We're kind of working toward for first level yeah, now stuff she's, now. She's got me doing some lateral work. So it's kind of like, oh, you're, like you say, Phil, you're back almost not to square one, but you're back on. Well, I don't, what? Is that enough? I don't really know. Is, yeah. that, is that what you yep. want? I don't yeah, really know. Sort of. that, is that right? Is that how I'm supposed to? Because you got to learn <laughs> yeah. all over again now. Oh, yep. how is this supposed to feel? Now I'm supposed to be going frontwards and sideways. <laughs> It's so, so like, what yeah. is happening? But it's very true. You know, it's, it's okay to stay and, and enjoy, but, and, and in our case, we're getting ready to compete. So that's important, but it also then on, on days we're training for the show, that's one thing. And then on the other days, we're starting to work on some harder things and come out of the comfort zone a little. So you're absolutely right, Phil, hit the nail on the head. But yes. I like that. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Like she likes that. that. She's a, she's a pusher. I, I, one of those students to really push forward. Well, Karen, thank you so much for your time tonight. And if our listeners have any questions about your journey and also about Kentucky Performance Products, how do they find you online? Oh, they can find us at kppusa.com. That's our website. They On that website, there's all our contact information. So feel free to give us a call. We also have a Facebook page that we're on all the time. And you can private message me from Facebook. And we'd be happy to hear you know, from anybody anytime with any questions. Fantastic. Well, thanks so much, Karen. And we look forward to telling everyone our journey next month. <laughs> well, and everybody have a really happy Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Yeah, I Yay. know. It's coming. <laughs> I can't wait. I love Thanksgiving. It's my favorite meal. I just get stuff. <laughs> me too. Me too. We're looking forward to it. Thanks, Karen. Okay. Thanks, you guys. Have a good day. We are going to have a quick break from Bates Saddlery, and we're going to come back with Wendy Murdoch from the Murdoch Method. To celebrate the holidays, if you purchase a new Bates saddle in November or December, you can redeem a free set of Bates Saddles competition luggage. Bates Saddles offer highly specialized saddles for every discipline, engineered to bring out the best in you and your horse. Underneath the finest European leather, you will feel the power of innovation. For you, the rider, enjoy instantaneous comfort, optimal balance, and seamless contact with your horse, leaving you free to concentrate on your aids. For your horse, the care cushion system and the easy change fit solution ensure their absolute comfort and your peace of mind. Revolutionize your riding experience and fulfill your true potential by riding in a Bates saddle. Conditions do apply. Visit BatesSaddles.com to find out more. That's BatesSaddles.com. Well, tonight we are so happy to have Wendy Murdoch from the Murdoch Method. She is currently in New Zealand. Wendy, I'm not sure I've interviewed anybody in New Zealand or who is traveling <laughs> New Zealand. Welcome. Thanks. Yeah, it's, it's been a really awesome trip. I've been traveling around for about six weeks now between Australia and New Zealand and meeting people that I haven't met before, but meeting people that I gave lessons to 20 and 30 years ago. So wow. it's really been a great trip. How cool is that? Well, we were chatting just offline real quickly, and I was actually in Minnesota. Shout out to the guys at North Run Farm. Uh, But one of the students was talking about 
uh, the Murdoch method, and he was actually using uh, your Equiband. And we haven't really talked about your other products other than the Surefoot method, but you have some other products and you have lots of books and information on your website and five minute fixes to improve your riding. So talk to us a little bit about some of the other things that you offer for the Murdoch method. So, you know, my story kind of begins back in 1984 when a horse flipped over on me and punched my femur through the socket and kicked me between the legs when he got up. And Uh. that was when I wanted to be an event rider. And I realized (laughs) that I had to, you know, this like universal message, you got to do something else. So my doctor didn't give me any physical therapy when I left the hospital and he didn't see riders as athletes. And so basically it put me on this journey of how to rehab myself and be able to ride again. And through that process, I met Linda Tellington Jones. I found out about the Feldenkrais method. I apprenticed with Sally Swift. And as a scientist, I kept studying anatomy and physics and mechanics and trying to understand, you know, how, how do we use this body in gravity? because that's the one thing we can't escape. No matter what anybody tells you, gravity is the law. And and if we don't organize ourselves efficiently in gravity, then we can't do efficiently the things we wanna do, like a dressage horse being able to go equally left and right or a show jumper being able to make a tight turn. It's all a function of, of being in alignment with gravity. So. I, you know, that's really where the Murdoch method came from is just all of this exploration of mine, my personal journey, and then looking at science and seeing how it relates and then employing the Feldenkrais method, which is a technique for humans that helps us achieve our potential by learning new possibilities of movement. So, you know, a lot of riders will tell me, oh, I'm really right handed or I'm, you know, I struggle. I always sit crooked. Well, That's just because they lack information in terms of how to organize their body to be able to do what they want. So what I do with the Murdoch method is I come in and use Feldenkrais and, you know, I have lots of little rider helpers, if you will, on the website so that they can feel a new experience and find a new possibility and be able to organize themselves in a new way. And of course, that directly relates to the horse. So I just, I'm here in New Zealand and we are, I just finished a lesson with a lovely dressage horse. He's 17 two, and the rider has, struggles with him because he gets sticky. And so we just, I gave her what's called a balance rein, which is next up that Linda Tellington Jones designed. And by using the balance rein and having to extend her arm, it not only balances the horse because it starts to create a collarbone since the horse doesn't have a collarbone, it helps give the horse a collarbone so he can reflex his neck over it. But at the same time, the rider has to give the hand forward because it has to travel up the neck. And then I helped her find her hip joints, which, you know, a lot of people actually don't know where their hip joints are. Um, But I helped her find her hip joints. And then the horse could start to come up in the withers, lengthen the neck, and and everybody's happier, right? So um, it's, yeah. So that's kind of what the Murdoch method came out of is my my kind of horrific experience that I don't want anybody else to have to go through. (laughs) No, for sure. And so talk about you also, when you kind of go on your website and you kind of are kind of leafing around, you also have all these, uh, you have the red mini tomatoes, you have the blue mini roll, like, yeah, what are those? Like I'm on here and I'm like, what are those? I was like, really cool. Smooth orange balls. Like you have tons of these, but what are they? Help us out. Training aids. Yeah. I call them training aids. And so you could think of the balls as like sure foot for your butt. Right. So it's an unstable surface. And so, you know, we want to latch onto our habits and our and our our seat has really strong habits to the saddle and rightly so. Right. But sometimes those habits aren't working for us. And so by using Franklin balls and there's there's seven different styles, you put them under your seat bones and now you're on an unstable surface, a lot like the pads are for the horses, the surefoot pads. And so you can't just kind of go into your normal pattern. You've got to figure out, wow, how do I balance on these things? And the beauty of it is that it raises you a little bit, opens the hip, lengthens the thigh, and lets your lower leg come back underneath you. So it puts you in an even better alignment. And so they're like, you know, I I have them for people because I can't get to everyone. But just messing around with a pair of Franklin balls in your warm up, where it opens your hip and and helps you come upright and frees you up, and that frees up the horses. So I think of it as sure foot for your butt. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That's so cool. You also have the equibands. Yeah, what, what and are those, those all about? Those are, so sadly, saddles are made for the average rider and I haven't met the average rider. You know, we all have a slightly different body, right? Longer thigh, shorter thigh, that sort of thing. And so the stirrup bar is often set 
to the saddle where the stirrup, where the um, point of the tree is. But there's a lot of riders that need the stirrup to be further back because they don't have the length of thigh to meet that. So with the equibands, they go, you always have to make sure the horse is okay with it. And I go through that process on my website and explain it because if one side comes undone, sure. you have a nine foot snake chasing your horse. So it's really important for safety yeah. to, you know, make sure you're, you know, you can put it on the saddle before you put it on the horse or put it on the saddle with it on the horse if he's quiet. But basically it's going from the inside branch of one stirrup around the cannel to the inside branch of the other stirrup. And that does a number of things. It stabilizes the stirrup because we've created a V-rigging. So now instead of having a stirrup that's acting like a pendulum, which is unpredictable, like if you put the weight on the stirrup, not quite exactly right, it's going to swing forward. And as soon as it swings forward, you're going to put your head over your foot and now you're leaning forward and then everybody yells at you to sit up straight, right? So by creating a V-rigging with the Equiband, it brings the stirrup back. I can position that stirrup so that their ankle is underneath the hip, stabilize the stirrup so it's predictable. It's not going to swing if you make a mistake or if it does swing, it's going to come back. And that helps the rider find a more rhythmic, especially rising trot, a more rhythmic rising trot where the hip can open as they rise. Because the minute that foot gets a little pushed forward and the hip closes, the seat goes back, the head goes forward. Now we're on the forehand and we put the horse on the forehand. So it's just, you know, something out of necessity that I created because I was actually started with Western saddles because a lot of saddles have the stirrup bar set too forward for the rider. And so they're constantly, if you hold your leg back to get it underneath you, you've created tension and that tension is going to restrict your hip. And what we really want to do is have a really free, greasy hip joint so that the horse can have a really free hip joint. And I tell my riders that you can take away the bridle, but if you are sitting on your horse, this, the freedom of your hip joint is what determines the quality of the contact. And so if you're a little restricted in your hips, that's going to affect your contact and restrict your horse. And so anything we can do to help the rider be in a better balance so that the hip joint can be really free and fluid that's going to change the overall quality of the contact to the horse. Yeah, that makes total sense for sure. Is, yeah, I mean, I'm always uh, something interesting whenever we talk yeah. about Wendy. Yeah. I know, you're like, wow, kind yeah, of mind blown. I was going to ask you a question about, you know, uh, yourself as an innovator, because we can, you know, we, we talk to you about all these products and the sure fit, foot pads. Are you constantly tinkering with ideas or is it more that you get struck, you know, in the middle of the night with these innovations or with a different ways to looking at these problems? It's a little bit of both. So, you know, like with Surefoot, that was kind of like this 15 second earth changing moment when I stuck a pad under a horse's foot. But then I start tinkering with where else can I use that? And what if I put riders on it? And I have to say that in the showers where I get a lot of inspiration, I think it's the <laughs> water coming down on my head. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's, I'm, I'm just always looking for some way to help my riders be in a better position, feel at greater ease. You know, I, I actually have an online course called The Effortless Rider, which has lots of unmounted exercises and mounted exercises to help them. Because, you know, what we want to do is ride in ease with our horse and have that really fabulous harmony. And so often what I find with my students is that they've been told what to do, but not shown what to do. So they're, they're trying to take words and figure out and images and figure out, well, how does that apply? But what they don't realize is the unconscious habits that they have. And so like with the Equibands and with the Franklin balls and with some of the, the, the balance rain, when we create a constraint, meaning a, a fixed point, now we have to learn a new way of moving around that fixed point. And my illustration is, you know, if somebody set a chair in the middle of the room, I could walk anywhere in the room and I would still be walking around the chair. But the minute I put my hand on the chair, I have to use my hips in a completely different way to move around the chair. So by creating a constraint, whether that's a balance rein, a neck strap, uh, you know, an equiband or a Franklin ball, it creates a, a different environment, a constraint that we now have to start figuring out, well, how do I move in relation to this constraint? And that creates new possibilities of movement. And that's very much how the, the uh, Feldenkrais method functions is that oftentimes it's the floor is a constraint and you're doing a lesson and you have to maintain a foot on the floor or a hand on the floor and then figure out how to organize the whole rest of your body around that point. But that brings in new possibilities of movement and new awareness. And, and so that instead of just doing our habit over and over again, we start going, wow, there's this other way. And by the way, it's 
easier. And so, you know, it's our nervous system and the horse's nervous system is designed to seek ease. We just need the opportunity to have an experience that shows us, ah, that's, that's another idea that's easier than the one I'm doing. And that one is, you know, has a better response. And so that's where I want to go. But if you don't have choice, you can't pick. And so often riders don't have choice because they're, they're trying to please the teacher or they're trying to please someone that tells them this is how it's done. And we're not given the opportunity to explore. And, and I'm not saying, you know, like get on a young horse and see what happens. I'm saying within <laughs> parameters, within constraints on a, on a safe horse, you know, start to see, well, what happens if I move my pelvis in a circle or what happens if I explore a Feldenkrais lesson called the pelvic clock and then allowing the horse to be our biofeedback because as riders, we are the luckiest people in the world because we're sitting on the biggest biofeedback unit on the planet. And it's immediate, it's direct, it's, it's always you know, right there for us. And so we get to sit on the horse and go, well, what happens if I give my inside hand a little bit? Oh, he put his neck down. Wow, that's cool. And look, he took a breath or wow, his back came up. And so when we start to have a dialogue of exploration, instead of simply trying to do it like right, you know, yeah. Because riding is coming yeah, out sure. of the military, right? Sure. So, you sure. know, that influence of this is the right way. But when we start to give ourselves a little latitude to do safe exploration, we, we not only have discovery, but we have curiosity and we have ownership. And so now instead of me relying on my teacher to tell me when it's right and wrong, I have an experience that I can feel that this horse goes better when I do this and this horse goes better when I do this other thing. And now we have ownership and responsibility and creativity. And that's really what I'm trying to get across to my riders is that, you know, it's, it's this dialogue where we feel free enough to go, well, let me see what happens. Like they told me it's this, okay, fine. I'll understand that. But if I make this little change and I just, you know, like free up my hip or bring my lower leg back or not jam, particularly not jam my heel down so hard, well, my horse's back comes up or well, my horse, yeah. you know, took a big breath. Good things so happen, right? We, yeah, yeah. Good things happen. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I think there's, there's nothing, nothing more honest than a horse's response, especially Absolutely. if you have maybe a little bit more trained horse and you're trying to, instead of teach the horse at the same time as learn, but if you have a more experienced horse that has some, some better knowledge, then, then, uh, you can have more expectation that the, the good things are going to happen when, when you experiment and, and practice in different ways. Yes. And that's how you can learn what's, what's right and wrong. Um, as, as well as having feedback from somebody watching from the ground. Yes. Yeah. We need guidance. We need direction and we need that moment. Like the more I work with people and, and horses, the more I realize we need a little moment to process information. And if, we don't have that moment. We're driven into our habitual patterns, which are not necessarily the ones we're wanting to use. And when we can just pause for a moment, take a breath, and then refresh it, you know, the horses, the people, everybody, it's like, oh, I can look at this again and I can, you know, explore instead of getting just kind of stuck in that, that freezy place, that little shutdown place. Because people do it all the time, too. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Wendy, I know you're just wrapping up your big Australia, New Zealand trip. What's, uh, what's next for you? So, um, I'm heading out of here. I'm heading home on the 25th and oh, by the way, on my store for the United States, we're doing free shipping for the week from the 25th till cyber Tuesday, I think it is. So there's free shipping on, on everything on the store in the United States. And then I get home and I turn around and I go to the uh, AAEP meeting, the American Association of Equine Practitioners. And I'm going to have a booth there with Surefoot. And we're really excited about it because there's a lot of veterinarians that are now incorporating Surefoot in their therapies for horses, especially Dr. Melissa King at Colorado State University. So we're looking forward to meeting her. We haven't, we haven't met her in person yet. And uh, that's that going to be really exciting. <laughs> That is so cool. So, Wendy, how can our listeners find your website and find you online uh, if they want to learn all about the products? Um, so, it's murdochmethod.com. That's M U R D O C H M E T H O D.com. And I'm on Facebook, Murdoch Method. I have a YouTube channel, which, like, I have the demonstration of how to use the Franklin balls on my YouTube channel. That's Murdoch Method. And on the website, there's a shop and there's lots of the Murdoch minutes are there, and that's all free, you know 
quick tips to help you improve your riding. There's that on there and there's, you know, a lot of great stuff. So um, is that the, awesome. fa- the Facebook, the, the fans of Surefoot method? So, so that's for people who want more information about Surefoot is fans of Surefoot. But I have the Murdoch method Facebook page, which is more with the riding and, and that kind of thing. So it incorporates more so they can join all of it. You know, Murdoch Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Great. yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Well, thank you. And you have a wonderful, safe trip home and a very happy Thanksgiving. You too. It's great talking to you. Well, Phil and I always talk about the Total Saddlebit Stability Stirrup Leathers and how much we love them. We do use them on our saddles, on our horses, and we love them. And we're really excited because during our hour on Radiothon, listeners can win them, right, Glenn? Yeah, so if you want to register to win, there's only one way you can do it now, and that's to call us that day. So if you go to HolidayRadioThon.com, it'll have the phone number. We're going to have 12 phone lines open all day long. The sooner you call in the day, call at 9 o'clock, and then you'll be registered to win all the prizes all day long. You can come on the air and chat with us if you want. Chat with Reese and Philip if you want, if you call in at the 11 o'clock hour, or you can just register and we won't make you talk to Reese and Philip. So <laughs> I want to talk. Ouch. I want to talk to though. Yeah, it'd be ouch, fun Glenn. if they did. You can wish them a happy. You don't have to say. I mean, you don't have to have an agenda. Just come on and wish them a Merry Christmas and just. Check. We're simple. Yep. We're really simple to talk to. Or, we we have a good time. Or you can answer the question in this. What's the uh, what's the naughtiest or funniest thing your horse has ever done? And we've gotten some very interesting ones. So <laughs> I've got, I've got some saved up. Yeah. yeah. I've got some saved up. You guys have to sure. pick one. You probably have thousands. So <laughs> it's like a daily thing, yeah, actually. Exactly. You know, daily, you just have to laugh at what's going on. And, but yeah, I have some good ones for sure. Well, I love it. Well, fantastic. Well, we have a great Total Saddle Fit tip of the week. And if you have any questions about Total Saddle Fit, they have a great website, totalsaddlefit.com. And we have a great Total Saddle Fit tip of the week from Brianna Zweiling. And we hope you enjoy. This week's dressage training tip is brought to you by Total Saddle Fit, home of the shoulder relief girth at totalsaddlefit.com. Well, this evening for our tip of the week, we have Brianna Zweiling of Epic Equestrian. She's the head trainer in St. Louis, Missouri. Welcome back to the show, Brianna. Thank you. Well, tell us, you have a great tip for us this week. What do you have? My trainer tip is I have to tell my students, ride what you want, not what you have. So our goal in training is to really help the horse understand our aids, right? And I think it's our responsibility as riders to deliver those aids in a clear, respectful way. If I think about an example of, you know, if your horse is behind your leg or crooked, it's really easy to get distracted and kind of fall into what the horse is doing. So I kind of go through a a mental checklist in my mind and I always first think about, I check in with my position and think about my balance. Am I engaging in my core really evenly through my entire body? Am I riding in a good uphill balance? So then with our position really steady, we can deliver those aids in a clear and positive way to encourage our horses to come up into a soft connection and balance themselves. No, and I think that that's such a good way to think about that because, you know, I, it comes to mind last night, I was teaching some lessons. It was very cold here. A lot of the horses had had time off because we had had very cold and snow. And so, you know, a lot of the riders were frustrated. And and that's kind of what I said, you know, you need to not kind of ride what the horse is giving you. Like, don't kind exactly. of stoop to that level. Like, come on, ask them what you want and really get it and and think mm-hmm. about for example, one of the, my riders was having trouble with a canter transition. She was getting a little frustrated. And I said, well, hey, stop, stop for a second. Let's take a deep breath and, and think about this is something you can do. So what is happening in this canter yeah. transition? She happened to, the horse was getting tight in her back. She was getting tight in her back. And it was a general, general situation. And I said, come on, really, let's think about this. Let's think about what's happening. Take a deep breath. And she did, and things got so much better. And I think that kind of just shows uh, sometimes just to take a little bit of step back and think about what you want, not what you have, is is a great way to kind of position yourself. What do you think, Phil? Yeah, I think it's uh, first of all really having a clear vision of, of of the idea of what you want, right? Because if you're muddling around in your own brain, it's sort of like very confusing 
for the horse, of course, but also you're kind of confusing yourself because you're not providing yourself with a clear preparation and a clear picture of what do I want to feel in the next transition, you know, and then execute that and have have a, a clear expectation of what what that what's going to happen. And if it doesn't, OK, you need to make a correction. You need to do this or do that. But I think a lot of times writers are, are sort of I always say that they're, you know, don't hope and pray for for anything to happen. Focus, envision the perfect transition or, you know, the the perfect leg yield and then execute that. And if there's problems, you can you can sort of develop an idea about why there's problems, you know, evaluate your seat, evaluate your horse's balance, evaluate the tempo, the rhythm, you know, a million different things that we talk about. But if you don't have a clear idea of what what you want to have happen or what you think the perfect thing to ha- to happen in that moment is, it certainly won't because you, you can't achieve what you don't envision for mm-hmm. yourself and for your horse, whether it's your own position or, you know, what, what whatever you're working on in that moment. So I think that's where, uh, you know, riders struggle is they they, uh, you know, put on the aids and, and, you know, you don't know what to expect if you don't, if you don't think about it first. Exactly. Fantastic. Well, I love that idea. Brianna, thank you so much for coming on the show. How can our listeners find you online if they are in the St. Louis area or want even more tips? I have a website, BZ Dressage, or they can find me on Facebook under my name or with Epic Equestrian. Fantastic. Well, we look forward to having you back on the show. Thank you. Well, as always, we love email and Facebook shout outs. Keep them coming. Call us on Radiothon or just in general, drop us a line about anything. We love it. And you can find our show notes and links to today's guests on our website, dressageradio.com. Like us on Facebook, just search Dressage Radio Show. Follow us on Twitter at Horse Radio. My website is maplecrestfarmky.com and my email is reese at horseradionetwork.com. I think the best way to get in touch with me is through Facebook or my email is philip at horseradionetwork.com. I'd like to thank our sponsors this week and don't forget to check out all the other shows on the Horse Radio Network at horseradionetwork.com. Keep your heels down, your shoulders back and have a fantastic Thanksgiving. Uh, We hope you guys have a great one and we look forward to talking with you soon. HolidayRadioThon.com, Monday, December 2nd. 11 a.m.